Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring Fabula Ultima, TTJ RPG. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review, featuring this role-playing game that attempts to bring the Japanese RPG experience to your table, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about game materials, the players and the game master. Like with many other role-playing games, you need a few materials to play this RPG. First, you need game sheets. These include character sheets used to track information about each player character. The first sheet contains most of the data, while the second sheet will generally be needed once your character grows in power or if they learn to use magic. Next, we have the group sheet. It is shared by all participants and it is used to keep track of the characters, creatures and locations they have encountered. It also features a list of the consumable items you will often use during your travels, such as potions and antidotes. Next we have the world sheet. This is generally managed by the game master and used to record important information concerning your game world, kingdoms, powerful characters, historical events, and great mysteries yet unsolved. Finally we have the map sheet featuring the map of your game world, as it is used to calculate travel distances and mark the position of important features such as cities, temples, fortresses and ruins, to name a few. You start the game with only one map sheet, but might end up using more if you explore uncharted territories. Of course, you will also need pencils, erasers and pieces of blank paper for quick sketching and notes. You also need tokens, a bunch of them. These represent fabula points for player characters and ultima points for villains. You need two colors of these tokens. Green and red are ideal. The more tokens, the better. Then you need dice. You need polyhedral dice specifically. Six-sided dice, eight-sided dice, ten-sided dice, twelve-sided dice and twenty-sided dice. Some effects within the game reduce or increase the die size. This means that a d8 could turn into a d6 if it suffers a reduction, and if it obtains an increase, it would turn into a d10. Now let's talk about the players. As a player you have certain responsibilities when playing this RPG. First you need to read this book, at least the introduction, the game rules, the world creation, group creation and character creation sections, and avoid the theory because it could contain spoilers. You also need to bring your tools to the table, pencils, erasers and such. You create the game world with the other players and the game master. You choose an archetype for your group. We are going to talk more about each of these different aspects in future parts of this review. You also create your character, which should be appropriately heroic. Even if you are an anti-hero, your fits should be quite heroic. You cooperate with everyone else within the fiction and outside of the fiction. You contribute to the ongoing story, and you should also allow your character to grow and change, not only in power and skills, but also in the experiences that character goes through as the campaign evolves. Then we have the Game Master responsibilities. The Game Master should also read this book, if possible from start to finish, but of course you can skip some parts if they are not necessary, for example, the Beast Theory section you only need to be aware of the monsters, the creatures that you're going to be using in a particular adventure. You also need your tools, the pencils, erasers, sheets and such. Your dice as well, of course. You need to apply the rules fairly. You take part in world, group and character creation. You breathe life into the game world, especially through the villains that you create. They should have goals, motivations and secrets. But remember that the fantastic locations are also characters in their own right, you could say that. You cooperate with everyone else, you play to find out what happens, you do not trap the players in a railroad, you relinquish control and let the players take part in the creation of the story through their actions, through their decisions. Now the next point shows that the designer of this game perhaps is not very experienced or very knowledgeable when it comes to role playing games in general because it says Ask questions. What will you do now? Where can you find this information? How do you feel about what happened? So this is not necessary. I am going to put a couple of videos in the description 
that will tell you about how to avoid asking questions and find information through roleplay instead. It will also tell you a bit about the first role-playing game, Dungeons and Dragons. And the other video, which is called There is no Dungeon Master or no Game Master, it's also going to present some reasons as to why you want to avoid asking questions. It is important for players and game masters to know that this is an erroneous way of transmitting the knowledge of how to play role-playing games. You do not need to say, what do you do, after every description. For example, the characters arrived to the port city of Star Seed. There are many wonderful places to explore here. The marketplace, the anti-grab parks, the noble quarters. The city is yours to explore. And that's it. The characters can decide if they want to visit one place, or if they want to look for a tourist map of the area, or if they want to ask non-player characters for more information, and you stay within character. You do not stop the flow of immersion. You are not pulled out of character, constantly asking, what do you do? Where do you want to go? What are you going to attempt? And the players are not going to be like, can my character do this? Can my character attempt that? Is it possible for me? Just do it, and you will see what happens. Don't ask if your player character can talk to that non-player character, just go ahead and do it. Don't ask if your player character can look for a map of the city. Look for a map of the city instead. Now the next point, last but not least, look for inspiration. Stories, ideas, pictures, characters, music, maps. Make sure to take advantage of all possible sources of inspiration for your adventures and campaigns. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part we are going to talk about the game rules. Now, I agree with most of the points in this section, except the ask questions point. Just give free reign to your players, let them explore, let them interact. Don't hold them by the hand. They can do whatever they like, they can attempt at least to do whatever they like. And again, I highly recommend that you watch a couple of videos that I'm going to link in the description of this video, telling you how to avoid asking questions and why the dungeon master doesn't exist. That's somewhat of a mysterious video. Thank you for watching this part of the review and thank you for your likes and your comments. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.